The Liangzhu culture, an incredibly ancient, now lost, yet once highly advanced civilization, one which once dwelled on the banks of the Yangtze River Delta in eastern China. The cultural advancements of this civilization have been of archaeological interest for a number of decades, particularly due to its similarity with the growth of our own modern civilization, throwing mystery onto how this once flourishing class-driven civilization suddenly vanished. Burials were often found to have been practiced to different standards. This depended on the financial assets of the individual's family. However, nearly the entire span of this monstrous ancient civilization's ruins lay stratified. Academia has been kept busy documenting their pottery techniques and the mastery they possessed in the manipulation of jade. Yet why they simply vanished some 4,000 years ago, after flourishing unabated from 5,300 years ago, has remained a thorn in their sides, one they were seemingly unable to explain without the partial admittance of an ancient great flood, a reality which it seems they have finally surrendered to. The investigations of this ancient civilization, although not widely known outside of China, have revealed that the civilization shows all the hallmarks of the other advanced global civilizations we have been researching worldwide, most probably linked, we feel. Canal manipulation for irrigation, advanced agriculture, and many other forms of evidence, including advanced plumbing and sewage systems, all lead us to this conclusion. Quote, Yet regardless of this single innovative millennium, the Liangzhu culture mysteriously collapsed around 4,300 years ago, and the ancient city was abruptly abandoned. Exactly why has never been fully understood, although many have suggested some form of catastrophic flooding led to the sudden decline. A thin layer of clay was found on the preserved ruins, which points to a possible connection between the demise of the advanced civilization and floods of the Yangtze River or floods from the East China Sea. Geologist Christoph Spudel from the University of Innsbruck in Austria has finally admitted. We find such conclusions, and indeed the ruins in which they were enveloped, highly compelling. Since the beginning of time, man has searched for different and more exotic materials for use with the pigments used in their art. From simple cave paintings many tens of thousands of years ago to the perfection seen from masters during the Renaissance, none have ever been as interesting as our next artifact. Known as Han Purple, it has been found on relics dating back 3,000 years. Used in wall paintings, on the terracotta warriors, ceramics, metalwares, and jewelry, the pigment found its way into many ancient Chinese art and amazingly, this intriguing pigment is a technological wonder. It was such an enigma made through such a complex process using many different materials in precise proportions and then heating the mixtures to incredible temperatures. Researchers at the British Museum have discovered that when the pigment is exposed to an LED light source, Han purple pigment will emit a powerful ray of light in near-infrared. According to their study, published in the journal Analytical and Bioanalytical Chemistry, the Han purple pigments show up with startling clarity when under the right conditions, meaning that even faint traces of the color which are invisible to the naked eye can be seen with infrared sensors. A complex pigment clearly developed for complex applications. Unlike natural dyes found within antiquity, which are organic compounds, Han purple is a synthetic pigment made from inorganic materials. Scientist Elizabeth Fitzhugh, a conservator at the Smithsonian, was the first to identify the complex synthetic compound that makes up Han purple, including a barium copper silicate. How these ancient people acquired such knowledge is clearly a question which needs to be answered. And although many people often scoff at ancient alien theories, quantum physicists from Stanford, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and the Institute for Solid State Physics of Tokyo have reported that when Han purple is exposed to extreme cold and a high magnetic field, the chemical structure of the pigment enters a new state called the quantum critical point, in which three-dimensional materials loses a dimension. 
we have shown for the first time that the collective behavior in a bulk three-dimensional material can actually occur in just two dimensions. Ian Fisher, an assistant professor of applied physics at Stanford said in the Stanford report. The researchers have said that the discovery may help understand the required properties of new materials, including more exotic superconductors. Was this marvelous pigment a gift from somewhere else? We find the evidence to be highly compelling. The Terracotta Army Undoubtedly one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries of modern times. It is a stone army that so far consists of over 8,000 individually detailed warriors, 700 uniquely carved horses, along with 130 chariots. What makes this feat, and indeed the ancient site, so astonishing, apart from the clear, incredible precision, delicacy, and artistic prowess of their creators, is the incredibly advanced technologies found to litter the army and the possible tomb. A supposed tomb with what we suspect is a mystery inhabitant, which, according to academia, this army was created to guard and carry over with into the afterlife. It is claimed that it is the burial of the first ever emperor of China, known as Qin Shi Huang. And although academia has concluded that these ancient soldiers were created during this well-studied, more modern emperor's reign, we feel due to the numerous mysterious factors attached to these miraculous artworks, in which we are about to convey, strongly suggests that not only was this accomplishment far out of the reach of these well-studied recent ancestors, but are indicative of lost civilization, which we have on our channel been searching so long to unearth and lay eyes upon. Firstly, the warriors themselves were all created to represent an individual painted with incredibly precise lifelike colors, which included a pigment known as Han Purple. A pigment so advanced, chemists were unable to replicate it until 1992. After it was successfully recreated, it was discovered that it eliminates an entire visual dimension, making waves in two dimensions. What's more, most intriguing, is the fact that although academia claims each soldier was a precise recreation of an individual subject, each warrior is around 2 meters tall. A height factor we have long postulated was a common reality, far back within antiquity. The metallurgy is another smoking gun. Swords unearthed in the pits were, regardless of their tremendous age, still sharp showing no signs of rust and still appearing new and shiny. All masterfully crafted, and according to tests of their surfaces, underwent an oxidation treatment with chromic salts. However, based on historical literature, another advanced technology which was not invented by modern man until 1937. Furthermore, supporting our posit that these warriors are not dated from an era 2000 years ago, but used as this culture's inspiration, is the fact that, regardless of the incredible discovery, no excavation of the purported tomb at the site, claimed by academia as the actual purpose for the incredible array of stone warriors, the Chinese government blocks all attempts to investigate the tomb. We feel this is likely due to the incredibly strong evidence of advanced technologies already publicly shared. Discovered at the entrance to this mysterious lair, like a scene from Indiana Jones, is booby trap mechanisms involving advanced crossbows, loaded with venom-tipped arrows, still in situ within the walls of the entrance, torque bows which were clearly created by a far more advanced people than we are currently being led to believe. According to academia, who has put forth a claim, we feel, is an attempt to impress and stifle further inquisition. These masterfully carved warriors were, apparently, created by over 700,000 men over a period of more than 20 years. Yet, as any artistically talented person will tell you, especially a sculptor, these warriors were not created by the hands of untrained slaves, who were ordered to chisel them out from the notoriously fragile terracotta. These warriors were undoubtedly created by individuals of tremendous talent and ability. 
If one requires further supportive evidence for this obvious hypothesis, a second terracotta army found within Western Han is far more realistic to the era, crudely created, and of a tiny scale, we feel, these warriors are clear evidence of the actual capabilities of this dynasty's inhabitants, and also, we feel, a clear indication that these initial emperors had indeed discovered the original life-size warriors at some point within antiquity, undoubtedly attempting to copy their advanced technologies, kickstarting their success in combat, especially armoring techniques, thus giving academia convenient factors from these recent ancestors to support their attempts to link and claim these remarkable statues as modern creations. This, regardless of the astonishing technological prowess which these 10,000 strong artistic masterpieces were drenched in. Deciding to ignore such controversial facts in favor of conclusive assumption, which once gained them extensive public faith in their ongoing, severe, selective research syndrome. Before Chinese censorship of the site had become a complete quarantine, modern archaeologists had intriguingly found tremendous amounts of mercury, a difficult element to have acquired in mass 2,000 years ago within the soil surrounding the mausoleum. A chemical also found beneath Teotihuacan, which we feel further supports our suspicions that this site, along with these incredible warriors, is far older and incredibly more advanced than currently attested, and is actually indicative of lost technology left by a now lost civilization. Who actually created the terracotta warriors? Who do they actually depict? Why are they so tall? Who built the complex underground lair, now conveniently shut off, never publicly explored, left triggered with advanced booby trapping? What is within? What are these booby traps protecting? It is a sight we find incredibly compelling. Throughout history, a vast array of individuals who, for whatever reason, became figures idolized by their civilizations. Some even seen as godly-like figures, sentient, divine beings, whom, upon their passage into the next life, were believed to live on, often as deities, according to New World History. The most academically funded research practices in said preparations into the afterlife is undoubtedly that of the mummies found within ancient Egypt. The Valley of the Kings, impressive protective strategy against tomb raiders. Yet the list of similar protective practices is long. The Sphinx, even claimed as the protector of the pharaoh's pyramidal tombs by some, although we, like so many others, based upon a lack of evidence, is untrue due to the pyramids never having been proven tombs. Yet this theme of protecting the dead clearly permeated historians' minds, and, we suspect, this is due to its recurrence throughout history. The curse of Tutankhamun, yet another relative story deriving from Egypt, with mysterious goings-on during Howard Carter's incredible discovery of King Tut's tomb. Objects of interesting motivations would often be left with these important figures, not just solid gold death masks, thrones, coins, canes, and other jewels, but people of nobility have even been found buried within chariots, complete with eight horses sacrificed for the burial. We have also covered many other booby-trapped tombs, proof of the ancients' own beliefs in their own versions of the afterlife. Yet, unquestionably, the most unique, and due to it remaining unsealed, the most enigmatic of them all, lay still guarded by an equally unique terracotta army. For all soldiers carved to depict an individual man, and the quantum phenomenon interdimensional pigment, Han Purple, still visible upon many of this army. What makes this site so unique from all others is that an entire army, along with other baffling technology, guard a tomb clearly constructed over such an incredible amount of time, and with such enormous effort. It must contain someone, or something, 
of unimaginable importance. Furthermore, as mentioned in a previous video, poison-tipped, inexplicably advanced compound crossbows have been found still laying in situ, protecting the entrance. Though at some point, coated in sediment, possibly why the terracotta army was found buried. Was this tomb pre-flood? Radar scanning technologies are advancing rapidly, and regardless of the Chinese strict forbiddance to enter the tomb, technology is finally allowing us our first look into just what exactly such an incredible display of power has been guarding for all this time. It's an investigation we find incredibly exciting. Ancient Uparts are undoubtedly one of the most interesting subjects in regard to lost antiquities. Many of these artifacts, due to the locations in which they are found within, or the immense age displayed within the erosion seen upon the object, makes them one of the most controversial areas of study. How can one answer the question of how an iron pot is found within a solid lump of coal within a seam over 300 million years in age? Or how the clear imprint of a chariot wheel is found fossilized deep within a mine in Russia? These artifacts, found at hundreds of feet deep in sediment, or displaying a wooden handle petrified into coal, display an undeniably immense age, and as such, are solid pieces of evidence to support our posit of there having been a series of now lost civilizations stretching far into the past. Nature is infamous in being cyclical. Why then would we not be permitted by mainstream academia to presume this be the case for the climates of the Earth as well? Regardless of this digression, however, the subject of tonight's video is an incredible artifact which we believe to be that of an ancient upart. However, due to its incredible characteristic, is being masqueraded as that of a much later creation by a far more recent ancestor. Known as the Sword of Gujan, this intriguing artifact has somehow resisted the effects of time, and although it is enormously old, is seemingly as sharp and as shiny today as the day it was made. This remarkable characteristic, although unexplained, is not the only interesting thing about the sword. It also features an incredibly old form of writing. Eight characters are written in an ancient script, now known as bird worm seal script, literally birds and worms characters. Owing to the intricate decorations of the defining strokes, it is very old and is attested to be a variant of seal script. In 1965, while an archaeological survey was being performed, along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jingzhou, Ubei, the series of ancient tombs were discovered. A dig started in the middle of October 1965, ending in January 1966, eventually revealing more than 50 ancient tombs. More than 2,000 artifacts were recovered from the sites, including the sword, having been found inside a casket together with a human skeleton. The casket was discovered in the December of 1965 at the Wangshan site No. 1, 7 kilometers from the ruins of Ying, currently called Jinishang, once the ancient capital of Chu. The sword was found sheathed in a wooden scabbard, finished in black lacquer. The scabbard had an almost airtight fit with the sword body. Unsheathing the sword revealed an untarnished blade despite the tomb being soaked in underground water for over 2,000 years. How did this sword retain its incredible condition? Why does it seem as if it is resistant to aging? What sort of metallurgy did the swordsmith once use to create such an amazing object? It is clearly an ancient upart, and one we postulate has an origin now hidden within the bowels of history. It is a remarkable thing, and as such, is highly compelling.